Hey guys, welcome back to Econ Class. Today we are going to be covering the production possibility frontier again, but we're going to be adding in the concept of opportunity cost to that. So our objectives for today are to use the production data to graph a production possibility frontier, and then to be able to differentiate between when given data that provides us resources to produce data versus that of productivity data. You need to be able to tell the difference between those two. And then finally, we're going to be able to calculate the opportunity cost when given production data. When given production data, you are either given one of two things. You're either given the pretty much the hourly or daily monthly production, and it's saying how many units you are actually producing in a given set of time or with so many resources. And then you are given also the examples where it's resources to produce. Maybe it's three minutes to produce one good. Now we're going to look at examples of each one starting with the hourly production. Now remember, this can be replaced with daily, monthly, or whatever it is, but we are looking at items that are being produced here. Now, John can produce 20 bracelets or 12 necklaces. That is his extremes on both ends. So what that looks like on a graph on the production possibility frontier is the 20 bracelets and the 12 necklaces. There's our PPF right there. We can produce any combination in between, but the table is giving us just the extremes on both ends, what he can produce. Now Mary can produce 12 bracelets or 10 necklaces. So we throw that up on the graph and it just looks like this. So we've been given the data, we've been given the hourly production, and all that we've done is thrown it on each one of these axes. All right, when it comes to resources to produce, this is a little more tricky to actually graph it. In this case, we got John and Mary again. They are producing bracelets and necklaces once again and we are given the number of minutes it takes them to produce one unit. So it takes John three minutes to produce one bracelet. It takes John five minutes to produce one necklace. So that's what this data is telling us. Always make sure you start out any question that gives you data or um, you know, a paragraph full of information about who's producing what, and you know it's a production possibility frontier or opportunity cost question, take a second to look at what information they're giving you. Now in this case, if we needed to graph it, we would have to convert this over to actual production. So let's figure out how much we need to produce. When it give us, gives you minutes, we know that there's 60 minutes in an hour. All right, so we can figure out hourly production fairly easily. 60 divided by three, 60 minutes in an hour, it takes him three minutes to produce one bracelet, so he can do 20 bracelets in an hour. When it comes to necklaces, 60 divided by five, it takes him five minutes to do a bracelet. He can do 12 necklaces in an hour. So now that we have that information, we can easily throw that over on the graph once again. Now Mary, it takes her five minutes to produce a bracelet, six to do a necklace. So five, 60 divided by five, 12 bracelets in an hour. Uh, 60 divided by six, 10 necklaces in an hour. So we can throw her stuff up there. So this is just how to get this information onto a production possibility frontier. When calculating opportunity cost, given production data or resources to produce, you have to look at what the information you're given is. In this case, we're given the hourly production. This table is telling us how many bracelets or necklaces John and Mary can produce in a given period of time. So that's gonna lead us to do one formula, whereas if it gave us resources to produce, how many minutes it takes to produce something, it's gonna be a little different. We'll cover that in just a sec. But John can produce 20 bracelets or 12 necklaces in a given hour. So what we want to find is what the opportunity cost of one unit of production is. How much is it going to cost him to produce one bracelet? How much is it going to cost him to produce one necklace in opportunity cost? So what we're going to do, what we sacrifice divided by what you produce. And as we run through this, this will make a little more sense. So in order to find the opportunity cost of producing one bracelet, we need to take the 12 necklaces that we're sacrificing divided by the 20 bracelets we're actually going to produce. 12 divided by 20 equals three-fifths of a necklace. So the opportunity cost of producing one bracelet is three-fifths of a necklace. Now inversely, if we want to find the opportunity cost of producing a necklace, we would take what we're sacrificing, the bracelets, 20, divided by 12, what we're producing, the necklaces, and that's going to come out to be one and two thirds bracelets. So the opportunity cost of one necklace is one and two thirds bracelets. Now let's go over this with Mary's information. Once again, we've been given production data for Mary. She can produce 12 bracelets or 10 necklaces in a given hour. So the opportunity cost for one unit produced, first start with the bracelets. In order to produce bracelets, we got to give up necklaces. So 10 divided by 12, what we sacrifice, the 10 necklaces to produce the 12 bracelets, 12, 10 divided by 12 is 5 sixths of a necklace. 
So the opportunity cost of one bracelet is five sixths of a necklace produced. Now for one necklace, we take the 12 divided by 10, the bracelets divided by the necklaces equals one and one fifths bracelets. So the opportunity cost of one necklace is one and one fifths bracelets. Now when given resources to produce, in this case, minutes to produce one unit, we flip flop the formula. So we know that it takes John three minutes per bracelet or five minutes per necklace to produce each one. So we wanna find the opportunity cost for one unit again. In this case, what we do is we flip the formula, what we produce divided by what we sacrifice. So in this case, we're gonna produce bracelets. So three divided by five equals three fifths of a necklace. All right, it's just an easy way to remember these. If you're given resources to produce, what you produce divided by what you sacrifice. So once again, if we look at the opportunity cost of a single necklace, five divided by three, five, necklaces divided by bracelets, five divided by three is one and two thirds bracelets. The opportunity cost of one necklace is one and two thirds bracelets. Now we'll shift to Mary. She can produce a bracelet in five minutes or a necklace in six minutes. So we wanna find the opportunity cost of one unit. Um, in this case, what's the opportunity cost of a bracelet? Five divided by six, five six of a necklace. If we move down to the opportunity cost of a necklace, Six divided by five, what we produce divided by what we sacrifice. Uh, necklaces divided by bracelets. So one necklace has the opportunity cost of one and one fifths bracelets. Now let's take some time to practice what we just learned. In the description below, there's a link to this worksheet. It goes over one example given production data, what we sacrifice divided by what we produce, and then one with a resources to produce question, what we produce divided by what we sacrifice. Run through both of these, see how you do, then check out the follow-up video to go over the answers. Also make sure you check out the next video in this series, Comparative and Absolute Advantage. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.